It is my belief that it is only logical that Nick Decker dye his hair. He is so far between redheaded and blonde in this state that is called strawberry blonde. He doesn't quite know which side to go to, so I believe he should dye his hair. It doesn't have to be a normal hair color. He can do it green or any other color. Thank you. So we were talking to our resident student expert, John McLeod. He has been a teacher forever and has seen every student in existence. And he says that Nick Decker's hair color is currently at a two. And we need to bring that up to a four. Now, it doesn't matter what color it is, but any color would be an improvement. And uh, John McLeod has approved this message. I haven't asked him yet, but I know he's approved it. Thank you. I'm good. Hi, I'm Jamaica. And I want to talk about the emotional part about Nick Decker dyeing his hair. I mean, think about it. If you see this bodacious boy with green hair, how would that make you feel? Happy? Sad? Excited? I mean, I think Nick Decker should dye his hair. Thank you. So for the emotional, I'd pick the emotional, like pants, like stance on it. And uh, we would, the first scene, we'd have two friends eating Twixes. And one would have the left, one would have the right. And then the one who had the left would end up having a really bad day. And then the next day, he'd eat the right. And he'd have like the best day ever. He'd find money on the ground and all that stuff. And yeah, that's about it. So you're given two Twix bars. Logically, you're like, which one should I eat first, right? And you look at it, and you're like, huh, left or right? So obviously, the right one to eat is the right one. That's just th that's the logical answer. So ours would start off with like an experiment happening and a scientist talking about the experiment where some people would eat the right Twix and one person would eat the left Twix. And so then we follow up with those people where um, one person ate the left Twix and one person ate the right Twix and we do an interview with them and we see like how bad their life is or how good their life is. The creek and so I had logic and so basically what's going to happen in the video is that a boy or a girl is going to be in the class and they're going to be distracted and unfocused and aren't able to really focus on their work and so we are going to pan from different scenes of, or different cuts where you could see the distractions such as loud music or kids being obnoxious and talking too loud. Um, the teacher is going to be muffled so you can hear a teacher talking but you weren't really sure what they're going to be saying and so the student is then going to have it's going to cut to another scene and we're going to be in the creek and so there's going to be like some ambient music or not really music but calm water in the creek and so then after that you just see the kid doing his work and then they get it done and then after that it cuts to another scene he gets up then he's able to just present that he's finished and it's all because he was calm and ready to do his work and relaxed in the creek um so our group's thesis was class should be taught at the creek and um, I chose credibility and so like uh, my pitch is maybe like in the first scene is at like a PTA meeting or something and they're talking about how the students aren't really focusing that well and the teachers are like oh I don't know like what to do and then like a mom stands up and she's talking about how like at a school that she went to they were teaching class outside and like by a creek and she got really good grades and she got into a super good school teachers are like, oh, that's insane. Like, what the heck are you talking about? School at the creek? And so then the next scene is at the creek, and there's like a s class going on because they just decide to try it, and everybody's doing really well. <laughs> and so then the next scene would be um, back at like a PTA meeting, and they're like, oh, yeah, that was such a good idea. Good, good idea. <laughs> that's it. So we open up in our first scene with a classroom full of dread. Children slumped over tables, the inability to learn running through their brain. And then we have a Sarah McLaughlin type figure in, come into the scene, breaking the fourth wall to ask the audience, how can we help these deprived children? Then answering her own question, she goes, class should be at the creek. We then go to the creek and we learn and see all these kids having a great time and then cut to a personal interview with one of the students and how it's drastically changed their life to become a better person. The sounds of nature, the serene surroundings, it's improved their life tenfold. And that's why class should be at the creek. For our video, we're gonna have 
man go out, or uh, my thing is credibility. We're going to have a man go out. He's in a suit, looks very formal. He's going to be telling us about how the government lies about things like the moon landing, 9 11, um, the earth being flat, and uh, aliens. And he's going to be a really scientific man. He's going to be a bio astro person. Uh, I forgot the major. But uh, yeah, that's going to be our pitch. Method of persuasion is logic. So basically, our video is going to be sort of like a PSA style video. It's going to be really dramatic music. You know, it's going to be really over dramatic. And we're going to have a very credible man, even though I'm not doing credibility, I still wanted to include this credible man. And his name is Greg McLeod. And he comes out and he, you know, he's an astrobiology major, so you know he's a credible man. And he just like, basically starts telling the audience, you know, like, why just the government is lying to us and all these things that the government is lying to us about. And there's really no, like, plot, like, set plot that I can describe, but it's going to be, like, just a bunch of really dramatic announcements that he's going to be in front of a green screen with, like, photoshopped images and stuff, and, like, that's pretty much what I have. Okay, so my group's thesis was that the government should stop lying to us, and my method of persuasion was logic, so um, in order to show logic, we should um, introduce like a professional or scientist, um, someone who works for the government, and they would tell us like facts about how flat earthers believe the earth is flat, and it's shaped like a pocky huck, and it has like a dome or an ice wall, and that um, we need, just need to prove that the earth is flat, so that's why we're showing like a, sci or a scientist. And um, how gravity is like an illusion and the hockey puck is pushed or accelerated upward by some mysterious dark energy and yeah. And, um, so my idea was that there would be like a, a bunch of students working on a test or like an assignment and um, It'd be like a narrator kind of explaining um, why you should keep your hopes high and expectations low <laughs> and how that like might help you um, do better on a test or an assignment. And then um, there would be um, students, like a student, like talking about like how they kept their expectations low and hopes high and how that helped them. And, like how it could help you and stuff like that. <laughs> so I think and we think that homework should be outlawed in schools. Students spend on average about six hours a week on homework, which is time that they could be spending doing other things like getting exercise or having social interactions or having friends and family time because we don't have very much time on this earth. And all that extra stress leads to health issues like depression and sadness and boredom and homework should be outlawed that way students have to don't don't have to deal with that homework piles of tedious papers are stacked up on the desk inside a dark melancholy room the student gets out of school at 3 30 p.m. but by the time they're done with all their extracurriculars it's 6 30 p.m. they still have to take a half hour to eat dinner but because they're so overwhelmed they skip this necessity um, at 9 30 only half their homework is done when they finally finish the last chapter of their AP comp book, it's already 1 a.m. <laughs> After spending an hour on their phone, the student sighs and turns out the light for bedtime, knowing the same stressful lifestyle is ahead of them the next day and the next day, and for years after that. The student gets to their first period class only to forget their homework at home on the desk because they were so overwhelmed by their tedious lifestyle. And here's why that's true. Uh, in Finland, uh, Finland has the best education system in the world. It's ranked number one on a global scale. And that is, you know, due to many reasons. But one of the things they swear by is a no homework policy all the way up through your senior year of high school. And they do this with the idea that, um, you know, their school system wasn't so great. It was pretty much at the same level that the US's was. And then they're like, you know what? We're just going to shake things up and try weird things. Turns out that giving kids less homework makes them less stressed and makes them more able to think in later classes, which, you know, makes sense. And so if we outlawed homework, or didn't outlaw, if we assigned less homework to no homework like they do in Finland, we would have better success like they do in Finland, which is, you know, yeah. 
He doesn't want to be inside. He likes cooking, but it's just so hot and boring in there. Next shot, there's a kid in class, and they are falling asleep. They are, they are just down on that desk. They are not paying attention. And so why can't they go outside? So now we see all of them. They're outside. They're frolicking. The woman, she's on her laptop at a nice cafe. She's doing her work, and she's just she's getting it all done. And the chef, he's barbecuing with this family. He's having so much fun. It's great. And the kid, they're getting all their work done. They're playing with friends. They're studying. And that's why people need to go outside more. Asks such as getting food, physical activity for athletic or recreational reasons, all of which are highly beneficial to one's quality of life and mental health. Such activity, especially exposure to the sun for at least 15 minutes without sunscreen, can boost crucial chemicals in the brain that commonly occur in small amounts in most individuals. This low amount of serotonin and vitamin D can cause unexplained fatigue, insomnia, restlessness, and depression. So you need to make sure you go outside, be responsible for his knees, looking all depressed, swaying back and forth, and he... He's just having a horrible time. Why, you ask? Well, a voiceover explains it. He doesn't go out. He doesn't go outside enough. And it's horrible. So many kids nowadays are suffering from this. The depression that ensues from lack of outside going is horrible, and it's plaguing our nation. It cuts to him playing soccer. Sort of a flashback to when he was a happy child, able to go outside. But it talks about how modern society now prevents this, keeps him inside, makes it so that he can't do what he loves. It cuts back to him swaying in the corner, and then goes back to a full flashback of him waving his arms around, happily playing soccer on a field with his friends. Then it shows rocker like a cradle and it's pressure sensitive so the harder you jam it forward the faster it'll zoom in and then zooming back toward you is how it zooms out so the control room might say hey would you zoom in on the on the talent or whoever that's what we call the person who's on camera so practice zooming all the way in on whoever that is right now it's me or some people on the couch so that's your zoom in and then your zoom out. Everybody see that? Focus it so I look crisp. Is it working? Okay. Try going the other way if, it, if it's the wrong way. Keep turning it till it gets sharp and in focus. Yeah? Okay, focus. So you can either stay in manual focus. We're going to try to get everyone to be on this mark. So now that you've done that once, Zoom all the way in and focus on me on this mark, and that'll be the focus that you use for the shooting of the people. So everyone focus on me, and make sure it looks nice and crisp. And then now you've got the, so now it'd be a good time to put the headsets on, and we're gonna follow the directions of the control room. And we're ready for our first person. Are we ready for our first person? Who's who's our first person? Okay. <laughs> there we go. So this just got a little clip on it. Okay. And you're just gonna find a place. My shirt's easy. Just wherever it works, make sure that's pointed at your mouth. That's your mark. Oh, how, how must aliens feel? Because can you imagine waking up? knowing that millions, literally millions of people don't believe in you. And I think that's kind of rough for them. So we should take that into consideration. And um, yeah, so our shots would include scenes of people feeling left out to kind of simulate what it's like to feel left out every day, like aliens feel. Cause we'll and she had an experience with an abduction with aliens. And she's gonna be wearing like a turtleneck and some like frumpy sweatpants, and like it's gonna be like insane and like looks like she didn't sleep last night. And yeah, and they're gonna be interviewing and she's gonna tell how they're real and everyone should believe that and from her perspective. So, yep. Someone 
either in a suit or a lab coat standing in front of a whiteboard and they will be talking about said subject and um, giving good logical points such as how else could people have built the pyramids and Easter Island without the assistance of extraterrestrial beings and their technology. And that pretty much wraps it up. Logic. Um, so planting trees above a grave should be a common practice for burials across the world, especially in places suffering from deforestation and the strong effects of global warming. And I think doing this in large, dense cities such as New York and San Francisco would create thriving parks in cities instead of bare patches of soil like normal graveyards. And cremation is cheap and easy, but it creates a lot of toxic waste. Mo mo most graveyards are filling up and creating spaces that could be used in more environmentally friendly ways. So for an example of a shot, we're going to have a person walking through what would have been a graveyard, but there's trees around, and they can go visit their loved ones that are trees grew from grew from the compost and stuff around in the graveyard so they can kind of visit their loved ones in the form of a tree. Um, and so basically the scene will start, scene one will start with two people walking through the forest. One will be a ghost and the other will be a living family member. Um, the ghosts will be dressed all in a monochromatic outfit, so it's clear that they're dead. Um, and they'll be walking together. Um, the living person will be speaking to them, talking about how much they love them, and it'll be very clear that they have a deep connection. Um, and the dead person won't be saying anything. They'll just be like acknowledging their um, words. And as they're walking through the forest, they get to a tree. And at this tree, the dead ghost will disappear and you will see a mark or marking on the tree that states that it's that person's grave. Um, and then the living person will be standing there speaking to the tree, talking about how much they miss them, um, and then they'll kneel down uh, in mourning, crying on the ground, and then the ghost will reappear standing in front of the tree and lift them up and bring them into a hug, and then there'll be shots of them switching back and forth between the living person hugging their dead relative and the living person hugging the tree. So it's making the comparison that you can actually continue your connection um, through after death if you have trees as opposed to burial grounds. So. Causing uh, it to be more toxic and less healthy um, around us. And if we planned a tree for every person who died, that our planet and Earth would be a much happier and healthier place for everyone. Yes. <laughs>